My mouth and body's luxury. Story flows out like a bobbin unwinding. For her it's not so. We don't get along all that well. She's jealous of my ease, my exaggerated charm, the studied intensity with which I narrate the tender and curious details of a situation. And the way she sings, I know the melodies. I know the words of the song, but I don't sing. I'm quick to catch her mistakes, but I never sing. 
Surprisingly, we danced well together. She stole her, but I did. She's the best dancing partner I've had. She knows how to follow, though. I'm not sure she's following. So perfect right together. Moving exactly the same way at the same time. It's obviously. There is no beginning or end to this song. She and I were dancing one night to a radio in someone's bedroom at a party. The event took place in early spring. I remember being quite happy that evening. We were dancing. A man stood by watching us. He interrupted frequently with comments like, Boy, you two are really good. Can I do it? Will you show me how? I left them there. a practice mystery. I abandoned that style years ago. Before I met her, I was just like her, understand? An afternoon and evening with her, and I find myself imitating her gestures and responses. I'm thinking now, she's asking me. She wants something from me. She gets me to talk about myself. A dangerous woman feeding a fantasy. All that follow is true, I swear. She wears a pin. Her hair reaches the hem of her dress. Her shoes are blue. She's tall. She's missing a finger. Her glasses are crooked. Her lips are full. Her heels are hard. She walks quickly. She looks around. Her hair is short. She wears a white scarf, she wears a white blouse, she opens her purse, she carries a sack, she carries a pink box tied with string. She wears a pin, she steps down, she removes her sunglasses, she watches the dog, the child takes her hand, she waits in the car. She touches her hair, her sandals are black, her toenails are red, her belt looks too tight, her hat has a green band, she carries two sweaters. She wears a carnation, her earrings are gold, her pants are striped down, she looks at the ground, she wears a locket around her neck, she waves her hands, she touches her abdomen, she fixes the ashes of her seat, she closes her wallet, she carries a cane, she looks behind her as she walks, her hair blows back away from her face. who can cut her body in half. The top half flies around at night, searching for babies to devour. The top half must return before daybreak to rejoin the rest of the body and move around like regular folks. It's scary. 
There is no guarantee that goodness is possible. We have trusted the word of religious men. That's why I don't sleep alone at night. We're dancing at the top of the Eiffel Tower. I said joking that it would be okay to jump if you could enjoy the trip down. Well, she said, you can stay right where you are and enjoy the trip down when it takes a little longer. I heard a woman talking about her in the crowd at the Visadero Market that she paid for fresh fish. She attacked me. I was just lucky I was able to get free. I saw half her body. It was naked. She had long, scraggly arms, skinny arms, trapped nails. I saw her flying away from my house. The Malanango was never referred to in any official documentation about that period. Like the stories she tells, they don't have an end or a beginning or any meaning at all. My real name is Elizabeth. I boarded that name years ago because it was given to me by my mother, a regal horseman faced alcoholic. She and I made a very bad team. We tortured and poisoned each other politely, the English way. Thank <laughs> you.